the most expensive Olympics in history. The Winter Games are getting underway in Russia, a source of national pride promoted by the president, or a sporting spectacle at any cost. The Sochi Showdown, this is Inside Story. They've cost more than all the previous Winter Olympics combined and have eclipsed the amount spent by China on the Summer Games in 2008. Now it's time for Russia to let its games begin. Hello, I'm Adrian Finnegan. Welcome to Inside Story. They've become known as the Putin Games, with the Russian president staking his reputation on its success. And no expense has been spared. The bill to date is more than $51 billion, four times more than original estimates. The cost of the 2010 Games in Vancouver, for example, was $6 billion. Sochi's been dogged by allegations of corruption in the tendering and construction process and has drawn controversy over human rights issues and a law banning gay propaganda. So there's a lot at stake. Are the Games, though, as much of a risk as an opportunity for President Putin? Al Jazeera's Paul Brennan in Sochi gets our discussion going. Sochi has come a long way since 2007 when it was named as the host city for this Winter Games 2014. You can see the coastal park behind me glinting in the sunshine on the shoreline of the Black Sea, rising from what was essentially swampland uh, just uh, a few years ago. But it's not been without huge controversy. There was, of course, the question mark about the cost. The generally accepted figure is somewhere in the region of $51 billion. Uh, that's nearly three times, over three times more than it was originally forecast to cost. And of course, there have been allegations of corruption involved in that too. I have to say, though, that um, reputations or, or reports that oligarchs have been uh, getting very, very rich out of this uh, might be a bit misplaced. Um, some of the oligarchs who invested big money into this project in the early days expected handsome profits. And as the costs spiraled, they found those profits being eaten up to the extent that some oligarchs are actually asking for a tax break from President Putin in the next year because the profits have been completely wiped out. That said, there are also um, controversies about Russia's general place in the world and the, and the type of uh, uh, policies that it uh, carries out. There's been concerns about human rights, there's been concerns about gay rights, um, and they have not gone away. And of course, one of the biggest issues, and it's ongoing even now as we run up to the opening ceremony, is the issue of security. I have to say that uh, we're based in Sochi, just a short distance up the coast uh, from the Olympic Park here. There is a huge police presence at all the main railway stations. There are metal detectors just to get into the station and as we were coming on the train there were actually police officers stationed at regular intervals along the track I mean the security presence here is is immense and very stringent indeed and the biggest question I suppose of all is is what will happen once the games start of course controversy is inevitable there's been questions about whether the hotels are going to be finished in time many of them frankly are not but once the sport starts, will that actually overtake the bad news and, and give a, a much more positive uh, light uh, for this Games? That is certainly, I'm sure, what President Putin will be hoping. So let's bring in our guests from Moscow. Today we're joined by Sergei Markov, a spokesman for Russia's president, Vladimir Putin. And joining us from New York is Michael Weiss, a fellow at the Institute of Modern Russia. Gentlemen, welcome to you both. Um, Sergei Markov, the most expensive games in Olympic history, some $51 billion and counting. Will that money have been well spent? Will these games be bigger, better, more impressive than any other Winter Olympics? I think it's reasonably that uh, such spending quite high because Olympic Games can be used by Russian government, first of all, for improving infrastructure in Sochi regions. Um, uh, making preparation for the Olympic Games, uh, Russian government constructed numerous uh, uh, hundred kilometers of uh, roads, uh, tunnels, uh, bridges, and also created infrastructure for the 
uh, uh, skies for the winter sports uh, in the mountains of Sochi, which is uh, and also some infrastructure for the uh, different congresses and so on uh, in the territory which is more close to the sea. And uh, this is important. The Russian government wants to improve infrastructure uh, on the whole territory and. Uh, uh, how, how to reduce corruption. It's a problem for every big infrastructural uh, project. And uh, the decision, I think, uh, have been found uh, quite smart. Uh, to combine uh, this uh, infrastructure spending with some event which is regarded as also some okay. political responsibility of the country. Yeah, well, and people are very glad that we will have now new modern infrastructure yeah. which will uh, attract attention on the millions of the tourists to this area after this. We'll, we'll try to ad address uh, the, the issue of corruption a little later in, in, our, in our discussion. Um, these games, though, are, are going to symbolize um, a new and, and modern Russia. Um, They've been dubbed Putin's masterpiece. Can, can you tell us why, why the president has taken such a personal interest in, in firstly, uh, winning the right to stage these games and then in, in the preparations for them? Uh, I think uh, for Vladimir Putin, not so important uh, is uh, Russia will win these uh, games or not. For Vladimir Putin, uh, what is important is to show that Russia is able country. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, we had a collapse in the 90s. We had social catastrophe in the 90s. A lot of people inside even Russia believe that Russia is unable country now, unable to conduct such, such big event. And Vladimir Putin was important to give impact to the uh, optimism, to enthusiasm in public in Russia. It's mostly important. And who will win is already not so uh, much imp important. And uh, uh, that's why it means that Vladimir Putin also very sporty man, and he chosen the event uh, not uh, so cultural, but more uh, sport. And uh, maybe you know that in Russia very uh, low uh, uh, life, uh, uh, average expecting uh, life. Uh, age and uh, to improve we need uh, to develop mass sport and Olympic Games should give very uh, big impact to the uh, development of the mass sport and to the increasing um, expected average uh, uh, life. Uh, listening with interest with that with a, a wry smile on his face Michael Weiss in, in, in New York um, uh, Veteran opposition politician Boris Nebtsov, who was who was born in, in Sochi, wrote earlier this month that the Sochi Games were an unprecedented thieves' caper. Uh, he said the preparations have become a disgrace rather than a triumph. Is he right? Yeah, I think he is, unfortunately. Uh, Mr. Nemtsov estimates that of the $51 billion that have been spent on this Olympics, a cost, mind you, that is greater than the prior, all prior Olympic, uh, Winter Olympic Games, and also more expensive than any Summer Olympic Games ever held uh, since the Games began. Uh, about 30 billion, he reckons, have been has been stolen uh, through corruption, through crony capitalist deals. Uh, it's important to remember. Mr. Markov was talking about, uh, you know, the, the, this demonstrates the the ability and the kind of return of, of uh, Russian competence and uh, kind of can-do entrepreneurial spirit. Well, it's true that a lot of the oligarchs, uh, the, the, the so-called private investors who have been putting their their many millions and indeed billions into these projects, uh, are being billed as kind of the uh, the titans of industry who are going to rebuild Russia and have rebuilt Sochi. The problem with this is that actually if you look at the very fine details of a lot of the projects, from the construction of hotels to the construction of ice skating rinks and so on, uh, most of the money, most of the, the budget for the Sochi Olympics has actually been footed by the Russian taxpayer. Because what has happened is, because of the delays, because of the uh, rapidly escalating costs, inflation of each of these projects, Russian state-owned banks have come in and essentially rescued these oligarchs from their own misfortune. So I think uh, Mr. Nemtsov estimates that you know, upwards of 90 percent of, of all of the uh, Sochi budget has actually been paid for out of the public coffers. And this is to not even address, by the way, uh, you know, it, it, I spent most of yes, yesterday looking at social media. Uh, and it, I have to say, it's a very bad sign if, if Russia wants to kind of declare its, uh, its renewed great power stature. The one thing you shouldn't do is invite a horde of haggard and angry and miserable and jet-lagged uh, foreign correspondents and put them up in a hotel, or many hotels, where floors have not yet been constructed in the reception area 
where Wi-Fi units are hanging from the ceiling, where the curtains have fallen down, where there's no running water, and the, the reception people tell you don't drink the water because there's, quote, something dangerous in it. Yeah. And indeed, I, on the streets, the, uh, there are no uh, okay. manhole covers for open manholes that anyone could fall through. Yeah. On, on so, I mean, already, and the Olympics haven't even begun, yeah. uh, we're seeing something that, that looks to be quite yeah. a shambles. Mike, Michael, on, on that note, I just want to, want to show um, our, our, our viewer um, some of the social media uh, tweets, journalists checking into hotels, as you say, uh, finding out for themselves about the, the, the conditions, about whether, whether Sochi is ready to host the Olympics. I mean, take a look at, uh, at, at these uh, tweets here. Um, bees in the honey for breakfast, as Michael was saying, questionable yellow-colored water out of the taps. Uh, urinals with no pipes. Uh, one journalist uh, posted this picture of uh, his, um, well, obviously unfinished hotel room. Uh, another with um, uh, said that they had internet access, but the, the Wi-Fi routers were dangling from the wall. And, and here, as, as Michael was, was, was telling us, um, uncovered manholes. Uh, Sergei Markov, is uh, Sochi ready uh, to, to host the Winter Olympic Games? Are, are these teething troubles uh, that we're seeing only natural for a project of this size? You know, what Mike was talking uh, very much familiar to me, uh, reports of Soviet journalists during the Cold War from uh, Western imperialist countries, uh, where they found and, uh, all the, some details which is uh, not so good. Of course, uh, in every place uh, it's possible to find some details, especially if so big events as uh, Olympic Games. But generally we can see that uh, a majority of the reflection of the sportsmen and journalists who come here uh, talking that uh, Olympic Games in Sochi are very well organized and uh, they have everything uh, uh, to make such a sport uh, uh, competition. And for, uh, from my point of view, uh, of course, uh, now we can see very big propagandistic attack against Russia. And the goal of this propagandistic attack, very, it's very clear. It's combination from the West, uh, Western countries and from the Russian uh, pro-Western opposition to show that Russia is still unable is the main the conflict, the main discussion. Is Russia able or unable? And we will see. By yeah. the way, my major concern about security in Sochi, it's not uh, so much about terrorist attack. Of course, it could happen anyway. Uh, but first of all, about so, uh, some possibility that somebody wants to organize a uh, bloodshed provocation in Ukraine. Yeah. You, maybe you remember during the opening, the uh, Beijing uh, Olympic Games in China government prepared a lot. Um, uh, somebody organized a bloodshed in South Ossetia and attacking of Georgian uh, troops against uh, Russian peacekeepers. Same, I think, now very big danger danger that same should be organized some bloodshed on the Ukrainian right. streets uh, uh, for the same so, uh, reason uh, uh, for the so Russian. It's my real concern. Yeah. And I want to ask uh, Western Western uh, politicians, as they know that such bloodshed provocation, now the process of preparing on the Ukrainian uh, streets and Ukrainian buses okay. in Ukrainian metros, it's mostly a uh, dangerous uh, right. uh, look, situation. Look, you, you, you Ukraine is, is a completely different subject we don't want to be getting into just at the moment. I, I just, no, no, just, no, it's yeah. not different, Scott. Yeah. Now it's very much connected. You, di you didn't it, got my point. You didn't got my point. I told that exactly as provocation in South Ossetia right. have been organized during the Beijing uh, Olympic Games. Same provocation okay. could be organized. I'm sure that they're preparing in Ukraine in the okay. uh, time of Olympic All Games. Right. We, we take the point. So, um, Michael Weiss, is it inevitable that the Olympic Games and politics, as we've just seen, meld together, given the national pride that's at, at stake. Is it ever possible to mount an Olympic Games that's free of political posturing, campaigning, opposition, public, uh, public um, uh, publicity seating, seeking? Well, I think that, you know, the Chinese tried very hard during the Beijing Games to kind of decouple uh, human rights and grave human rights concerns from their hosting of a ma massive uh, international sporting event. However, in the case of Russia, look, uh, I, I think Mr. Putin and his government have, have fashioned a rod for their own backs. Uh, in, the re in the last year, they have passed uh, institutionalized homophobia, the anti-LGBT uh, law. The mayor of Sochi recently declared that 
Actually, there are no gay people in the city of Sochi, which makes him at least as civilized as the last president of Iran, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. Uh, you know, you're hearing a bunch of uh, interesting comments by Mr. Markov, and if I might uh, just doff my Western imperialist hat yet again, if you want to make this the equivalent of what happened during the Beijing games, then Russia might as well just invade Ukraine at the start of the opening ceremonies in Sochi. That's, of course, if they can pull their military and security forces from the so-called Ring of Steel that is meant to protect Sochi from terrorist attacks. It's a very bad thing, I think, that you're hosting an international sporting event in a part of the world, in a part of Europe, that's not very far from a daily terrorist insurgency and counterinsurgency campaign. And again, you know, this comes back to the original question of why Sochi? Russia is a country that is associated, it's almost a byword, for Arctic temperatures. And here we're hosting a Winter Olympics on a latitude that is shared with the French Riviera, Russia's most subtropical climate. Uh, you know, uh, we were talking earlier, Mr. Markov made allusions to the, the massive infrastructure that has been undertaken to, to prepare uh, Sochi for the games. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's going to happen when you don't have a natural, uh, you know, climate and a natural terrain and landscape for putting things up like ski slopes. Uh, you know, one of these projects, by the way, is a massive dual motorway and train system. And in terms of infrastructure and in terms of benefiting the people of Russia, uh, waste was dumped into a nearby river. Villagers have been completely inconvenienced by this project. Uh, they've had to have uh, potable water tanked in. They've been promised a permanent water main. The Russians who actually live in Sochi are quite uh, discomfited by the games, in fact. And look, this is not, this is not some kind of outside criticism. Uh, recent polls suggested that as much as two-thirds of the Russian people believe that the Sochi games were essentially okay. a giant racket, that most of the money was siphoned off through corruption if not, quote, simply stolen. So right. the, the people of Russia have actually spoken out quite vociferously about what's been going on here. I, I, know, I know that, that Sergei Markov wants to, wants to come back on that, but, but first, um, the debate over, over these Sochi games is, is taking place not just here on Inside Story, but online too. Um, earlier we asked you to post uh, some questions. Here are just two that are fairly typical of the responses that we got. Uh, Ian Dude asks, do you think many people will boycott the games uh, because of Russia's persecution of minorities, specifically homosexuals? And Kieran Marchant wants to know, where all that money has gone and why aren't things ready? Well, we've tried to address that. Sergei uh, Markov, you're the president's spokesman. I, I, I want to know what he makes of all of the controversy that surrounds his games. A number of world leaders have said that they won't be attending uh, the opening ceremony of the Sochi Games. Um, is that embarrassing for President Putin? Hmm. Uh, as I know, the number of the leaders of the countries which attended uh, uh, Sochi Olympic Games uh, more than any other Winter Olympic Games which happened in history. So it's not a problem. Um, uh, if uh, some of the uh, uh, presidents uh, decided, uh, some of the leaders decided no attended, uh, for example, as president of uh, France, uh, what, uh, what is the matter? I just been in France. Uh, uh, the Mr. Roland is the mostly unpopular president, maybe in the French uh, uh, total history. Uh, it's uh, not the matter. And also, you should take an account. I think Mr. Putin, so as the Russian government, not so much care what uh, international leader thinking about Olympic Games, about Russia, about Putin himself. Also because he know very well already what they thinking, what they talking. If you, if just all and I'll come to a microphone, I'm sure that Putin know everything which already he will say. So it's not the news. Vladimir Putin care what sportsmen will say about Olympic Games and what Russian citizens will say about this because they need impact of that enthusiasm for the development of Russia to show that Russia is able to conduct okay. Olympic Games and Russia is able to create again high-tech uh, technology and we know some of the people like Mike don't want that Russia will share this uh, uh, feel of uh, optimism and, and enthusiasm and so on. Such people want Russia will be unable. That's why they work, they want, they get uh, their money. Okay. And when they say this propagandistic campaign right. very well subsidized and supported. 
Well, let's not forget, of course, that, that this is one of the world's biggest sporting events, boasting some pretty impressive numbers. Take a look. Some 2,874 athletes will be competing, guarded by more than 37,000 security officers. That's equivalent to more than 10 for each athlete. A record 88 countries are being represented competing in 89 events, of which 12 are new, among them the women's ski jump. There are 98 gold medals at stake over 16 days of competition, all this in front of an anticipated global television audience of 3 billion people. Well, let's bring in our third guest now, who joins us uh, from Sochi. It's Owen Gibson, chief sports correspondent for The Guardian uh, newspaper. Owen, good to have you with us on Inside Story. Is the fallout over the cost corruption and all the other issues detracting from the spirit of the games, do you think? Well, I think it can't help but uh, have an impact on it, certainly in these days running up to it. A lot of the talk has been about just how much it has cost. I mean, it's extraordinary being here and just seeing uh, an entire Olympic, not only an Olympic village, but an Olympic city plonked in a sort of hitherto uh, undeveloped part of uh, Russia um, and the, the debate will obviously continue about whether that's a good thing or whether it's a bad thing, whether it will leave a legacy or not. But I think it can't help but detract from the sense of excitement in these days running up to it. But if, any other, if the experience of any other Olympics is anything to go by, I think once the sport begins, that will, that will hopefully take over and some of these debates will be left for after the closing ceremony. How good, Owen, are the, the sporting venues, given the, the, the money spent? Will Will the money spent translate into, into sporting spectacle, given that, that many of these venues are relatively untested? Athletes won't have had an opportunity to, uh, to train at them, given that, that the construction overrun. Well, that's right. I mean, to be fair, a lot of the venues, they have had a chance to train out. They were finished in time for the, uh, for the test events. But you're right. I mean, they're kind of unknown qualities, although all the athletes I've spoken to so far, all the team members are very impressed with the quality of the facilities. Obviously, uh, some of my colleagues in the media have been less than impressed with, the, uh, with their hotel dorms and so on. But the actual athletes have been very well looked after and the facilities themselves are, are world class. I mean, they're brand new. I was up to them. I was up in the mountains yesterday. and there's no doubt they're very impressive. And, and Owen, there are some pretty uh, stringent security measures in place there in, in Sochi and throughout the games, along with uh, some intensive surveillance. How will that impact, you think, upon, upon athletes and, and spectators? I mean, I think there was a large degree of nervousness coming into the games. All the stories about a, a ring of steel. Obviously, we had the bombings in Volgograd before Christmas and, uh, and, and stories about surveillance of, of Internet traffic and mobile phones and so on. Certainly, I think that's something that's concerning everybody. But by the same token, the, the security that is here is fairly unobtrusive. They've uh, obviously put this big ring of steel around yep. a large area, which means that once you're inside the bubble, it's quite unobtrusive. And in short, you know, are we set for a great games? I think it will be a great game, but I think the questions about the amount that's been spent and about whether there'll be a valuable legacy will go on for an awful long time afterwards. M Michael Weiss, when it's all over, what will Russia have, have gained from its investment and the, the president's personal passion for, for, for these games? To what extent is, is, um, is President Putin eyeing his legacy, do you think, with these games? Uh, to a very large extent, I think. I mean, look, if, if the games do go off without a hitch, if a building doesn't collapse, if no one gets killed, if there's no terrorist attack, and if all the athletes uh, return home safely, then, uh, you know, he'll declare victory. Uh, the question, though, in terms of um, the, the actual physical and financial legacy that has been left in, as, as Owen put it, a kind of, you know, plonky little uh, hamlet, uh, that, I think, is, is very dubious. There's been talk about what some of these facilities can be converted into, what they will be used for uh, henceforward. Uh, you know, Sochi is a, a city of about a half a million people, uh, and I don't see them using, um, you know, world-class hockey rinks or ski slopes or okay. all the rest of it, nor do I see this becoming a huge tourist attraction after, uh, you know, this February. And Sergei Markov, the, the, the final word to you very briefly, if you don't mind, sir. Uh, you're confident that, uh, that we're, we're going to have a, a, a good Winter Olympic Games? Of course, we have a lot of snow and we have very uh, good uh, new infrastructure. Uh, of course, uh, uh, 
I don't like I don't like that oligarch have been involved. I think it should be on the government level, and also I prefer that these resources how they will be used. Now we're very much sure that it will be not sent to the millionaires, but it will be used mostly for mass sport and another health condition. Okay. I think Vladimir Putin, who has a residence in Sochi, want more and more Russian citizens and, and people from the uh, the world could visit Sochi and okay. enjoy staying here because he knows that it's very good. Okay, gentlemen, we're out of time. Many thanks indeed to, to, to all of you. Let's, let's hope that, that we do have a, a great winter games. In Moscow, Sergei Markov. Uh, in New York, Michael Weiss. And from Sochi, Owen Gibson. Many thanks, gentlemen. Do please add your voice to the debate on our Facebook page. Uh, go take a look. In Doha, I'm Adrian Finnegan. Thanks very much indeed for watching this edition of Inside Story. From me and all the team here, bye for now.